All right, so as an example problem, uh, let's solve the following system of first order ordinary differential equations. Um, so our system of equations is given here. So it's a system of two first order uh, ODEs. And so then we're provided with two initial conditions uh, here. So in the example problem statement uh, in the text, uh, go as far as to solve the problem analytically and compared to the numeric solution. Uh, but let's just solve it numerically in MATLAB and see exactly what that looks like. So let me just adjust my screens a little bit. So I still have the equation there, because uh, I'm sure I'll forget. Okay. So when I'm trying to solve a system of first order ODEs, so just like in the previous chapter with a single ODE, uh, the first task is to take my system of equations and write it as a system of uh, rate functions, right? And that's exactly what we have here. And so what I mean by that is we have two variables in these equations, x and y. And so in order to solve this system of coupled ODEs, we need to be able to calculate how x changes with respect to uh, time, so a rate function for x with respect to t, and a rate function for y uh, to tell us how y changes with respect to t. And so what that means is we just need to get the first derivative of both of those quantities all by themselves on the left-hand side. Okay. And so then uh, to solve it, uh, we need to create a, a rate function. Um, so just click New Script. So it'll take the fun or form of function uh, res. So just like before, ODE45 expects a rate function with two inputs and a single output. Okay, so output will be res. Um, we'll call this uh, rate fun, and I'll call it 10, 1, because it's example 10, 1. And MATLAB expects a rate function with two inputs. First input variable is going to be t time. Then the second is going to be the value of our functions at t. Okay, so I'll just use a, a v for the uh, now. Okay, so it should look just like the previous chapter when we had just a single ODE. We have a rate function with a single output and then two inputs. So difference here is my second argument, which is was before was just the value of my function at t, is now the value of my functions at t. And so uh, what I will do, just like when we solve um, systems of uh, equations using fsolve, is the first thing I'll do is I'll take that vector and I'll unpack it. Okay, so if I unpack uh, my input vector, okay, we have two variables we're trying to solve for x and y. We can order them however we want. It's just once we choose an order, we need to be consistent. Okay, so I'm going to assign to x the first element of v, and I'll assign to y the second element. Okay, so ODE45 you know requires this uh, vector containing the value of our functions. Uh, and so you could work with uh, v uh, in your rate function. My preference is to unpack it. That way, when I write my rates, I can use notation uh, more similar to the problem statement, and it helps me um, you know, prevent uh, potential errors. Okay. So now the next thing is we don't have any parameters here. Uh, and so what we'll do next is we'll compute our rates. Okay. And so you know I'm calling my first function x, second function y, and so first I'll compute my rate of change of x and then I'll compute my rate of change of y. Okay, So the first term I'll calculate is, I'll call it dx dt, and that's just negative y. Okay. So again by unpacking v, I can just type in y there. Second rate is dy dt, and that's 1.01 uh, times x uh, minus 0 0.2 uh, times y, where again by unpacking um, I can use notation more similar to the problem statement. Okay, then the last step is ODE45 expects a rate function with just a single output. So here I have my two rates. So I need to pack the two rates up uh, to a single uh, vector to be returned. Okay, so next I'll pack up uh, rates. And so I'll have res is equal to uh, dx dt um, dy dt. Okay, so I need to pack the two of them up um, and return just a single variable. Uh, and then the other uh, very subtle but important detail is when I pack them up, I need to pack them up to form a column vector. Okay, I need to pack them up to form a column vector, so the two elements need to be separated with a semicolon. Okay, they have to be uh, packed up as a column vector. Okay, so I'll save this as rate fun. 
All right, so um, if we just try and call ODE45 uh, like before, so let me go down to our initial conditions. Okay, so um, form of the call is uh, very similar to before. So if I just you know call ODE45, first argument uh, function handle corresponding to our rate function. Okay, so our rate function. Second argument is going to be the range of times I want to solve over. Um, so I can't remember if uh, they gave us a time range in the problem statement, uh, but that's okay. Okay, we're going to definitely start at zero, uh, but then we can make a t final of say uh, 20. Okay, and then next, okay, before we in the last chapter we just had initial condition when we had a single uh, ODE, so a single function we were trying to uh, calculate. But here we have two, um, and so we need initial condition for both x and y, and so I need to um, pass those to ODE45 as a vector, okay? And so since I was calling x my first function, then y, okay, my initial conditions are going to be provided in the order of x and then y. So if I call ODE45 uh, as so, if you remember from the last chapter, the default behavior is going to be to generate a plot. Okay, and so we get a plot that looks like that. Okay, cool. Okay, and that's okay. Okay, so typically the preferred way would be to assign the output to variables. Okay, so just like in the last chapter, I'm going to assign my output to two variables, and so it takes the form of you know these multiple optional output variables. So in brackets. I will uh, list the two variables I want to assign the results to. Okay. First argument, or first variable t, will be a column vector of times, just like we saw in the last chapter when we were solving single ODEs. Okay. The difference now is m. Okay. m is going to be a matrix. m will be a matrix where the first column will correspond to x, our first function, second column will correspond to y, our second function. All right, and so if I press return, okay, so you already see in my workspace, now t is uh, 125 by 1, so it's a column vector, 125 rows, one column. m is a matrix, 125 rows, uh, two columns. Okay, um, so we'll go back and look at that uh, in a second. Um, but packing up vectors, you know, in this form that m uses is, is very common in MATLAB, uh, so common that if I were to call plot and do t comma m, MATLAB knows enough to plot first column of m versus t, second column of m versus t, and it would all go all the way up to however many columns of m uh, you have. Okay, uh, and so if I were just to press return, right, get the default behavior of, of lines, uh, first set plotted is blue, uh, second is red. Okay, cool. Okay, something I like to do. Um, again, uh, I always like to do as much as possible to try and minimize uh, confusion and errors that I create caused by confusion. Okay, so if I just type t, right, so t is going to be my um, column vector of times right, that goes from 0 to t final. Okay, I type m. Okay, m is a matrix where first column is going to correspond to x, second column corresponds to y. Right, and so there you see my initial conditions at time equals zero. Okay, so it's almost kind of set up like I might picture um, tabulated data, uh, say in micro Microsoft Excel. Okay, well, what I'll often do is is M is great, um, but you know, if I you know create this matrix, perform some calculations, and come back later on, you know, sometimes I need to go back and um, look at say my rate function to try and remember. Uh, what my first uh, function was and what my second function was. Um, it maybe becomes more confusing if you have even more and more. So what you'll often find me doing is as soon as I get m, uh, splitting it up. And what I mean by that is x is my first column. So I want to take my first column of m and store that to a column vector x. So how I would do that is remember when I uh, refer to elements of a matrix first argument is row and then column. So in this case, I would want all rows, first column. Okay, and I could do the same thing with y. y is all rows, uh, second column. Okay, so I could take m and I can 
cut it in half and assign the respective columns to a representative a variable. So now maybe if I want to plot uh, t versus x, all right, and now I can more clearly say uh, draw that as a black line, and then t comma y, and I want to do that as a, a red line. Okay, so now it's more clear to me uh, what exactly I'm plotting. Uh, and gives me more control in terms of controlling, say, colors, and if I want to control the format. Okay. And then it's easy enough to remember um, what they correspond to, right, in terms of x, x and y. Right? So it's easy enough to say add a legend uh, to my graph. Okay. Hey, cool. The other thing we'll do a lot is we'll plot a phase plot. Okay, so if I want to plot that in a new window, so I'll type figure 2 to bring up a new figure window. What's meant by a phase plot is, okay, and actually let me shrink this so we can see our graphs. All right, there we go. Okay. So when I typed figure 2, I opened up a new figure window. So let's, you know, plot our phase plot in figure 2. And so that would be plotting um, x and y uh, against each other. And again, you can do that as a black line. Hey, cool. And we get this nice, cool spiral trajectory. Okay, I won't go and you know label everything uh, and go crazy. But you know, if I want to go back to Figure One, right? I need to make Figure One active again. I just type Figure One. Okay, Figure One's open again. And if I want to change my x label. And call it say uh, time bam I can do so if I want to go back over to figure two all right how to do that is figure two okay figure two is now active and I can do X label X okay cool and just like that we solved a uh, system of couple first order um, ODEs all right uh, all right, so you can go and see how it solved analytically to get uh, that general solution for x <laughs> um, and then y. Um, but you know, as you saw, we just solved it easy enough uh, in MATLAB. Okay, and then all of our same tricks apply from our last chapter. If you want to create a function, uh, just return values at t. Um, you can absolutely do that as well. Okay, but now you would return value of both x and y, presumably uh, at t.